So if you think you're pretty good in geometry, this should be a very easy question to answer. And what we're looking for is the area of this region right here. And what we have is a square that overlaps a circle. And this side of the square runs through the center of this circle. And this distance is 12. Okay, so that is all the information. Again, we want the area of this region right here. And uh, this type of problem is a very uh, common type of problem in geometry. So hopefully you know how to solve it. And if you think you have the answer, put that into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to fully explain this in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, we have this square that overlaps this circle. Again, this side of the square runs through the center of the circle, and this distance right here is 12. Okay, so let's see exactly how to solve this problem. To get to the area, this region right here, we have to kind of separate the two figures. So we have a square and we have a circle. So if we could determine the area, the complete area of the square, okay, which of course would be this whole part right there, and then subtract away not the entire circle, okay, that's not going to help us because this part of the circle, uh, the circle right here isn't involved in this uh, figure right here. But this part of the circle right here is. So that's a semicircle. But nevertheless, we would have to find the entire area of the circle and just take one half of it. That's this region because this side of the square is running through uh, the center because this is, uh, I, as I told you, as I indicated, the diameter okay, of this um, circle. So this would be our approach. So hopefully you're like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand what's going on here. So you're going to need a couple of formulas. We need to know the formula to find the area of a square. And then, of course, we're going to need to know how to find the area of a circle. And we just have to take uh, one half of that. So these type of problems... Uh, before you really start getting into them, you need to have a clear strategy, a clear approach. And again, very typical common type of geometry problems. So now it's really up to us just to do the number crunching. And hopefully uh, you understand the formulas for uh, to find the area of a square and the area of a circle. These are things that uh, I think all people, uh, particularly if you are a math student, should have already in your long-term memory. Now, if you forgot, maybe you've been out of school for many years and you forgot uh, the formulas uh, for the area of a circle uh, and the area of a square, well, I'm going to show you them right now. Okay, so now that we have our strategy, let's go ahead and start with the area of a square. The, to find the area of a square, very simple. All we're going to do is take the length times the width, but really we have side, 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 because... In a square, all sides are equal, so uh, the side times the side, or length times the width, is going to be s times s, or s squared. So the area of this squared is just going to be 12 times 12. Remember, this is a square, and this, uh, which is also the diameter of the circle, is 12 units long. So all four sides of the square are 12 units long. So the area, again, is going to be 12 squared and 12 squared, or 12 times 12 is 144 units squared. But we'll just call it 144 for the time being. So this is the easy part. So let's move on and finish up the prom. And to finish up the prom, we already have the area of the square. So the more exciting part of this prom is to find the area of the circle. All right, so how do we find the area of a circle? Well, we need to understand the formula. And the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. All right, so again, if you are a math student, any level of mathematics, this is a common formula, and hopefully you remembered it, but if you forgot, this is the formula. All right, so we need to understand what pi is and what r is, and let's go ahead and uh, talk about that right now. Okay, so the diameter, all right, let's just uh, kind of review what we have here. So we have this square, and this side of the square is 12, so all four sides of the square are 12. 
but we, uh, all right, as I indicated in the beginning of the problem, this side runs through the center of the circle, meaning that it is the width of the circle, and by definition, that is the diameter. But we don't need the diameter, we need the radius, and the radius is this length, okay? It emanates out from the center, and it's, uh, by definition as well, one half of the diameter. So if the, if the diameter is 12, one half of 12 is six, and that is the radius. That's what we need. We don't need the diameter. We need the radius, so that's what the radius is. And now, all we need to do is plug in this information into our formula. So the area of the entire circle is pi r squared. I'll get to this pi business in a second. So we have the radius that is six, so we're gonna plug in six here. And be very careful, a lot of um, students uh, make the error of multiplying pi times six and then squaring that. Remember, uh, when uh, we're talking about the basic order of operations, you have to do powers here before multiplication. So six squared is 36, that's six times six, so that's 36 pi. Now, let's just talk about the, this answer, okay? If I told you, or let's say you were a geometry student or a math student, and you were found, you were asked to found, to find, excuse me, the exact area, okay? If you were, um, again, the question says, find the exact area of a circle, for example, radius six, this would be the answer. Of course, we would have to put units uh, squared in there, but uh, when it comes to circles or anything with that involves pi, uh, this is the exact answer because here, if I want to have a decimal version of this answer, and I'm going to get to that in just one second, what we're going to do is replace pi with an approximation, okay? But your answer is not going to be exact. It's just going to be an approximation. So that is not a trivial detail. And again, I'll do that uh, calculations here in a second, but we are not done. So all we've done so far is find the area of the entire circle. Remember, that's not part of our strategy. What we need to do is find the semicircle. So we can't find the semicircle until we find the entire circle. So our entire uh, uh, area for our entire circle is 36 pi. So we're just gonna take that and divide it by one uh, or times one half or divide it by two. So one half times 36 pi is 18 pi. And this now is the area of the exact area of the semicircle. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put this all together. So let's revisit our strategy. So to find the area of the shaded region, we needed to find the area of the square, which we did, that was 144 units squared. And then we needed to find the area of that semicircle, which is one half of the circle, which of course is 18 pi. All right, so remember, you know, back up here, we had to kind of find the area of the circle and then find the area of the uh, semicircle by dividing the area of the circle by two. All right, so if you're with me, this is the exact precise right answer in uh, units squared, okay? So that is important. If this was like, for example, in centimeters, our answer would have to be centimeters squared. That's a little detail that a lot of students, a lot of people, um, miss out on, but you know, good math teachers are going to dock you points. You have to always be mindful of the units of measure. Okay, so let's talk about pi. All right, so as I indicated, pi, okay, we cannot ever find the exact decimal equivalent of pi. Okay, so in other words, you can't just write out the decimal for pi. So most of you are like, oh, well, it's 3.14. Well, no, this is an, this is an approximation. Okay, a very rough approximation. Matter of fact, you never want to uh, use an approximation less than 3.14. Now, uh, the reason why you can never have all the digits of pi is because pi is something uh, we call in mathematics an irrational number. In other words, all the digits of pi do not repeat and they do not terminate. So to find out what the entire number of pi is, we'd have to go out to infinity, and both you and I don't have that kind of time. So uh, you, there's no way to actually find all the digits of pi. So, you know, we're just going to kind of, even if we had a thousand digits, that's still an approximation. Okay, so you just need to understand that. So when you want some sort of working value for pi, the more digits you use, the more accurate your final answer will be. But uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use a rough approximation of 3.14. If you want a better estimation of pi, you can uh, pull that up in your calculator. You can certainly uh, look it up online as well. 
But uh, let's go ahead and take our exact answer, right? So this is the exact answer, 144 minus 18 pi units squared. But let's go ahead and get an approximation for this. So we're going to replace this pi with 3.14. So 18 pi means 18 times pi. So we'll plug in 3.14, and then we'll just uh, do the lovely math here. So 18 times 3.14 gives us 56.52, so we'll subtract that away from 144, and we end up with 87.48 units uh, squared. All right, so again, a very typical type of problem in geometry. Now, if you need help with this kind of stuff, area and volume problems, uh, let me give you a couple quick suggestions here. One, I have a lot of videos like this on my YouTube channel, at least a good number, uh, where you're uh, looking for the area of specific regions. Again, this is a very common type of problem uh, that you need to understand how to do. Uh, and this is not just for geometry students. It's for those of you out there that might be taking a test like the SAT or ACT or some sort of standardized test. Again, very typical type of math prompts. So you can check out those YouTube videos, but if you need help in full geometry, I'm gonna leave a link to my geometry course. You'll find it in the description. And some of you might be saying, you know what, I learned this maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I would like to maybe relearn all these math skills that you forgot. And if you are one of those people and you're like, man, you know, I kind of like math. I want to kind of get back into it again. Check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Uh, in there, you'll find basic math. You'll find a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some trigonometry and some probability and statistics. You'll have a very, very good, well, uh, well-rounded math education. It's a self-paced course. So for those of you that are not actual students, but just like math, check out that course. But uh, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.